Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Olectra Green Tech Q4 FI24 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presenter concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now. Hand the conference over to Mr. Amar Khan Gaur of Access Capital. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Gaur. Thank you, Manav. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of Access Capital, I welcome you to the Q4 and full year FI24 post results conference call of Electra Green Tech. From the management team, we have with us Mr. B. Sharachandra, CFO, and Mr. P. Hanuman Prasad, Company Secretary and Compliance Officer. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Sharachandra for his opening remarks. Post which we can have the QA, QA. What are you, Mr. Sarjanu? Thank you, Mr. Amar. Good evening, everyone. So we are taking as read the presentation which is put on our website along with the safe harbor statement thereon. We are pleased to announce good consolidated results showing growth of top line and bottom line for the financial year 23-24. Though the performance of fourth quarter was impacted due to the supply chain constraints. The operating margins remain positive for the quarter four and full year. We have delivered 1,695 electric buses and 51 tippers till 31st March 2024. I would like to present the key highlights of your company for the financial year 24 at a glance. The company has secured world's largest e-bus order of 5,150 buses from MSRTC. Received 3,000 electric buses order from Best Mumbai. One court case for Best 2,100 order. First OEM in the country to achieve a milestone of 10,000 plus electric bus orders. Homologated and completed AIS 038 certification for all bus models for the batteries. Successfully extended the cooperation agreement with BYD till 31st December 2030. Electra buses have successfully covered more than 20 crore kilometers across the length and breadth of the country. The strong demand remains uh, with company's net order book of electric buses at 10,669 uh, or 969, 10,969 numbers after delivering 400 buses in financial year 24. Our focus continues on increasing our capacity and enhancing our technology capabilities. The construction work of the new state-of-the-art plant is in full swing and partial production from the facility has commenced from this month. To incentivize the shareholders, the board has recommended a dividend of 10%. Now I'll begin uh, to provide the key highlights for the full year on a consolidated financial. The revenue for the financial year 23-24 was 1,154.1 crores, up by 6%. The company's EBITDA for the full year reached an impressive 185.5 crores, marking a growth of 20% compared to previous year. The PBT surged to 105.8 crores, an increase of 18% versus the previous fiscal of 89.4 crores. The PAD stands at 78.7 crores, up by 18% compared to previous fiscal of 66.9 crores. On a standalone basis, the revenue for the financial year 23-24 was flat at 1,114 crores, the company's EBITDA for the full year reached an impressive 168 crores, an increase of 13% compared to the previous year of 148.6 crores. The PBT surged to 98.7 crores, an increase of 8% versus the previous fiscal 91.1 crores. The PAC stands at 73.6 crores, up by 4% compared to previous fiscal 70.7 crores. The quarter four, as I mentioned in the initial remarks, was impacted. Uh, due to the supply chain constraints post certification of the battery safety norms. Uh, the, the, uh, accordingly, the, on a consolidated basis, the revenue has been uh, uh, for the quarter four is down, and correspondingly, the operating margins as well as PBT and PAT has been down for the uh, quarter four. Thank you, and over to the access team for the quarter uh, Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
we have our first question from the line of bala murthy krishna from om oman investment advisors please go ahead hi good evening uh, i am listed to opening remarks could you please uh, repeat uh, how many buses we have produced in this quarter yeah total for the full year 507 buses and for the quarter is about 131 100 so under on the, how much we are expecting in this financial year sir fi 25 how many buses we can produce fi 25 we are expecting a uh, number of about 2000 plus numbers uh, one more thing sir regarding that uh, pm is a tender so i think uh, um, there is a one bidder was already awarded some number of buses in the initial tender what is our position in earlier call i think uh, at that time we have not participated in the tender so whether we have participated in the tender and or uh, 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 in the first tender we have not participated and any outcome of the tender my colleague ramesh will uh, address this question we have in the tender uh, and we, uh, but however uh, the competitor has received the order okay and regarding the second tender i think uh, the second tender will also out so uh, we are also going to participate in that tender itself yes we are going to participate in the second uh, tender itself and as of now uh, it is due in may month okay and the so and uh, regarding this new facilities uh, whether it's in uh, full fledged or uh, still uh, about to ramp up and uh, i think uh, we are uh, talking about the starting the second shift uh, so uh, what is the plan for that when we can implement that uh mr balamurli uh, basically we are uh, we have started as i think uh, we have discussed earlier we have done the trial production in the month of february and uh, we are transitioning into the new plant and uh, uh, the we are just uh, completing the process and uh, whatever teething issues are there we are resolving it and uh, by the end of quarter 1 we will be uh, 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 ready in the new plant partial partial commencement of uh production we are going to uh start uh by uh, we have already started by quarter 1 we are going to ramp up okay uh, in that one we can expect uh, two shifts running sir or uh, we are planning for single shift operation generally uh, uh the oems generally operate for about 12 12 hours uh, shift so if it is required we can uh, extend it so initially we are thinking of uh, doing a single shift okay sir. and uh, and uh, utipers uh, could you please throw some light on how things planning out and what is the order book of utipers as of now uh, utipers we are conducting lot of demos and trials across uh, various project sites uh, the conversion uh, uh, the ramp up is yet to happen the traction is yet to happen we have about uh, 41 Uh, orders uh, uh, tippers to be uh, orders on hand we have delivered totally till date about 51 tippers uh, in the last financial year about 34 and we have about 41 uh, tippers orders on hand okay sir. lastly on this uh, guidance for 2000 buses and do you see any challenges uh, which may um, Uh, which may stop us to achieving that guidance because uh, in the last financial year so we have a good guidance but uh, um, we could not able to achieve because of various reasons like battery norms so that yeah so do you see any challenges we can uh, face in this financial year itself also to uh, not um, because of that we could not able to achieve this guidance up to the end of the year as of now we are not forcing uh, any major challenges uh, we are going to ramp up from quarter to onwards the so quarter to uh, quarter one will be little slow because we are in the transition to new plant and for q2 onwards we are going to ramp up the production uh, we we are not expecting any uh, challenges as of now okay that's perfect thank you sir please thank you sir we have a next question from the line of siddharth agarwal from systematics please go ahead yeah good evening sir uh, how are you doing all of you yeah good evening mr sudha yeah. how are you yeah great great but uh, you know i was just uh, a bit depressed on uh, seeing our q4 numbers and when you said that you had supply side constraint could you just elaborate on it that 
what happened exactly you know during the quarter because of which our production was impacted production or sales whatever was impacted yeah see basically i think uh, to elaborate uh, government of india has introduced the uh, safety norms for the battery where the testing and compliance certification is required to be done as the facilities they are not available in india uh, the testing has to be done online in china it took more time and it was beyond our control and capacity we successfully completed all the trials and uh, obtained requisite certificates uh, but uh, in, uh, in the interim we lost about almost two quarters and post certification uh, the supply ramp up uh, uh, by the manufacturer the vendor uh, uh, there was constraints in uh, ramping up the production so that is the reason the quarter 4 and the full year got impacted and that is one reason second is uh, to keeping up for the future production requirements we have transitioned to the new plant and started pilot production from a new facility in february 24 we are uh, in the process of streamlining the process and initial seeding issues are uh, we are trying to overcome and by end of this quarter the production capacity will get enhanced and uh, for your kind information we have rolled out the first batch of delivery from this facility this month uh, sorry what is the last sentence you have rolled over we have rolled out our first batch of uh, uh, delivery from this facility yeah so uh, so how much time did it take you and what is the batch that you have rolled out i think february 1st to february 4th we started right trial production over there See, basically we have trial production we did in february it's more of uh, uh, yeah. trial and then uh, we are now start, uh, doing the partial commencement, commencement of production in okay. one particular body shop where in uh, first batch of delivery about 30 numbers okay so that has been done yeah that has been done that has been given to the customer yeah okay so that has been given and now So, so till March we did 30 over there. So let's let's say the story is over over there. Now from April onwards, where are we seeing per month? Because I think it's going to be a subdued quarter. Huh? Sorry. Hello. <laughs> yes, sir. I think April, May, June are also going to be a subdued uh, month, right? Uh, this quarter will be subdued because we are in the yes. uh, process of transition. Uh, yeah. we are hoping uh, the numbers to be in uh, in line with uh, quarter 4 or slightly better than quarter 4 so around 100 maximum 150 to 200 the target is 150 to 200 totally for the quarter and then from next next q2 onward monthly production you looking at overall uh, we are uh, as, as i mentioned about 2000 numbers is what we are targeting So okay we are going to uh, uh, accordingly ramp up from quarter to onwards okay but you're not seeing any supply side constraints or those testing norms and all affecting you as of at, at all from now onwards as of now okay. we are not uh, forcing any challenges no so those uh, you know the checking and all which you were saying so those things are behind us or it's still happening so that is behind us totally behind us so now all those testing norms are finished right uh, done and done yes yes it's done did right yeah. okay And sir, in terms of uh, our e-tippers, uh, what kind of numbers are we doing now? Monthly run rate or something, whatever you can. E-tippers, uh, e-tippers, we did not do any uh, scale in quarter four. Uh, mm. We have been uh, doing uh, extensively uh, demos and trials uh, in various project types. Mm. Conversion, uh, though the performance of tipper is very very good, conversion mm. of the private uh, uh, inquiries into order mm. is yet to the traction is yet to happen. Mm. we have about 40 41 uh, uh, orders on hand yeah okay but until now we have delivered 51 you said right till date cumulatively 51 numbers were delivered okay and last question for my side so right now our capacity is 200 units per month for buses and when are we planning to ramp up uh, if at all if by 25 or if by 26 yeah uh, in the new plant to start with we are ramping up the production up to 2500 numbers and by the yeah. end of the financial year uh, we are expected to touch about 5000 okay okay targeting 400 almost 400 per month okay yes okay fine fine thank you we can move on to the next thank you sir thank you thank you sir we have a next question from the line of aryan mehta from mehta investments please go ahead uh, hello sir 
uh, year, uh, quarter after quarter, the execution has been very slow. Something and the other always pops up. So can we expect that uh, will adhere to the timeline of, of the orders that we have received? Yes, uh, so as, as uh, in the initial uh, uh, question was raised, uh, we have already clarified the reasons why uh, the numbers got impacted. So we are actually uh, planning to ramp up the capacity uh, in the new plant uh, we are, and uh, we are uh, targeting to fulfill the orders and and. So we are targeting about uh, 2,000 numbers in this financial year minimum. Uh, about 5,000 numbers in the next financial year and 10,000 numbers in the following year, wherein the existing orders, all orders will be completed. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, and also, sir, to clarify on the 2,000 number, uh, last quarter you gave a guidance of 2,500 for FY25. So has anything changed uh, and on why you are giving 2,000 numbers? No, since the quarter one uh, has been uh, subdued, the coming quarter is subdued and then... Uh, See, we are conservatively giving a 2,000 to 2,500 numbers. Mm -hmm. mm. And my final question. Yeah. Uh, my final question is that mm. we are a pioneer in e-tipper uh, e space in India. And uh, can you see the opportunity for e-tippers maybe three or five years down the line that how many tippers could be sold that year and what would be the expected penetration of e-tippers, maybe in the future sometime? See, uh, there is definitely a lot of potential in e-tippers and trucks uh, because the operational economics is quite good, significant. But as you are aware, uh, uh, there are other inherent challenges uh, for the conversion because in typical ice engines, there's a lot of uh, uh, ice uh, diesel uh, pilferage which happens in the project sites. So, so once we convert it to EV segment uh, totally electrified, so these uh, issues will not be there. So that is also one reason where the private uh, people, uh, uh, there is resistance is there. But apart from that, the product is excellent and uh, the economics is quite viable. Uh, the, we are trying to actually work on uh, uh, localization. We are trying to reduce the cost. The, our product is premium product, so uh, uh, and uh, the whatever is supplies we have done 51 uh, tippers till date are doing very very well in all the project sites. So we expect the traction to happen in the next uh, two quarters in this year. Thank you so much and all the best, sir. Thank you, sir. We have a next question from the line of Gorang from Utility Unified. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Please go ahead with your yeah. questions. Yeah, good evening, team. Uh, my first question is related to the 2,400 BESP order, uh, which was notified on 22nd of February 2024 to the exchanges. So as per the tender, which was floated by BESP, the requirement was of 2,400 plus the 25% variation. So is there any chance to grab those additional 600 buses as part of the remaining 25% clause? As per the as per the letter of award and as per the agreement, both actually that 25% is there. Once we once we complete this 2400, automatically that 600 we can expect. Okay, thank you. Good to know about that. Uh, my second question uh, is with respect to the same tender of 12 meter 2400 buses. So the value which was notified was 4000 crore. So it basically comes to around 1.70 crore. But the first tender of 12 meter uh, 2100 buses. So that time the approved value was 3675 crore, so which comes to around 1.75 crore. So I just wanted to understand the re reason behind fall in per bus revenue since the bus configuration is almost the same. Because uh, if you remember the first order of 2100, that was coming to around 3675 crore, which is 1.75 crore. But this time it's coming to 1.70. So I just wanted to understand why is the re uh, reason behind fall in per bus revenue. See, basically, I think the one is the timing. Uh, the first tender was uh, done uh, uh, quite long time back, whereas this is the latest tender. The prices also, we are uh, uh, we have been very working uh, rigorously uh, to do uh, to uh, increase the localization content 
and uh, reduce the cost to be competitive in the market. So accordingly, uh, the time since the timing is different, uh, the cost also is slightly different. Fair, fair enough. Okay, my last question. Uh, so recently, UPSRTC, which is Uttar Pradesh State Transport uh, Corporation, has announced to deploy 50,000 electric buses over a period of four five years. So, with related to the same, the first tender of 5,000 uh, odd electric buses have been floated. So, I just wanted to know if Electra has decided to place the bid for the same. One minute, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, as of now, the tender is on NCC basis. Uh, as of now, the all the OEMs in India and operators are not interested to participate in NCC. So, including us, all the OEMs have submitted uh, our request to convert into GCC, and we, we are uh, uh, all the OEMs are under pressure with uh, UPS RTC. We are expecting that this tender will refloat as GCC, and after that, we are very much interested because it's a UP is a very growing state, and we want to. Uh, uh, receive orders from UP. Oh, that's great to know. Okay, my final question. Uh, also, uh, are we expecting a FEMI 3 to come up for private electric and trucks and buses? Uh, like, what is going around in the circle in terms of policy making? Any idea on that? See, as of now, uh, see, because of the elections, no uh, orders or no uh, uh, Sanctions can come. As of now, it is silent. So we have to wait for the elections uh, to get over, and then the announcements will happen. But as you are, uh, I think you must be tracking. The government of India is pushing very hard for electrification of public transportation. And uh, as of now, the percentage of population of EV conversion is very, very less than one percent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, definitely, the government. We are expecting the government to come with some uh, uh, policy guidelines. Okay. And, sir, and sir, in recently, MHA has uh, released that uh, our government uh, target is to convert all the buses to di from diesel to electric, and they have uh, given a figure of eight lakh buses to be converted into electric from diesel by 2030. Yeah, yeah, that's where I was coming from. So, hence I asked. Nonetheless, thank you so much for answering all the questions, and I wish the Electra team a glorious uh, next FY2425. Thank, you, Thank so you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have a next question from the line of Omar Shankar Mukherjee, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, I have a couple of questions. The first question is, uh, what about the capital expense of 800 crore? Uh, we read from media that the 400 crore from the promoters and 400 crore from bank. What is the update on this? Yeah, yeah. What is the second question? Yeah, second question is about... Uh, uh, as people are saying that 8 lakh crore buses and lot of, uh, you know, uh, by 2030, we have lot of scope, right? So, in the supply line change, reception or some other battle issues, we are getting, every quarter, we are getting, you know, we are, we are telling you to achieve our target, and it is not good sign. So, can, from this lesson, can we learn and proactively uh, uh, plan future for next uh, uh, capital uh, to achieve that goal, maybe you can buy land or some other thing. But not, and that should be not the same state like Andhra or uh, Hyderabad. It can be north or some other coast part of India. Can you have a larger plan uh, for that uh, in the future so that now uh, if, if, if whatever is getting good contract and we should deliver, right? So we should have one pipeline ready. Maybe we should have 30,000 or 20,000 per year capacity. Can you have a plan for coming to here? Yeah. Uh, to answer your first question, uh, regarding the capex for the new greenfield plant uh, at our Sitarapur plant, so uh, we are uh, now going with a term loan of about 500 crores. We have received sanctions from the commercial banks, and uh, we recently the board has approved, and uh, we are in the process of completing the documentation, and next year, two to three weeks' time, we are planning to do the drawdown. That is the first question. Second is the supply chain uh, aspect. Uh, we have already acquired 150 acres of land in Hyderabad, and we are building up world's largest EV manufacturing facility. Uh, and um, in terms of uh, EV buses, and uh, the the to start with, the capacity is built uh, for 5,000 numbers by the end of one year, and it can go up to 10,000 numbers within year two. And based on the requirements. Uh, we can 
make a shift, uh, uh, double shift, uh, uh, three, triple shift workings, and then increase the capacity to meet the uh, requirements. Yeah, sir, this is, uh, we are aware of this uh, total second shift. We can have total 10,000. I'm saying that in future, advance to that, we can uh, have it proposed uh, from the getting approval for buying a land in different states for our next capex, not this one, planned one. Maybe we should have target 30,000 or more capacity per year. Uh, maybe it, it, I know it will take time, but uh, if we plan now only, then only we can uh, we can showcase our uh, pipeline, and it, it is easy to get a you know uh, new uh, new deal. So can you have other plan? Uh, as a point noted, we will have to deliberate internally. As of now, we have uh, we are focusing on building up existing new plants. Uh, at an appropriate time, we will uh, revert if we have, are having any plans to set up any facility outside the state. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. We have our next question from the line of Samir Deshpande, a shareholder. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mr. Samir, please go ahead. Uh -huh. um, we have. As everyone has experienced uh, the disappointment over the, um, we are not in a position to meet any of our targets and every quarter we have been facing various challenges. So now you mentioned that we have the total order book of about 11,000 order um, buses. Is it correct? Yes. Approximately about 11,000 numbers. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, we are the uh, actually in India. We are the first in this. So from this, uh, I am not in a position to know whether we are the largest players in India in e-buses currently, with the annual sales of only 507 buses. Or are there any other competitors who are uh, selling more number of buses than you in India to the government? See, as of now, uh, see, uh, we along with. Uh, uh, Competitors like Tata Motors and Switch Mobility of Asia Plan are the major players. Uh, in terms of order book, we are the largest. And in terms of delivery till date, uh, we uh, and in terms of operations, we are the uh, we, uh, we are India's number one. So uh, as far as uh, uh, the constraints were there, it is applies not only to us, it applies to our entire EV uh, segment and. Uh, uh, hopefully the constraints we are uh, overcoming and then we hope to ramp up the production and supply in the current financial year. Uh, uh, our sales of 507 is the largest if you uh, take in the annual year in this year for the entire industry, electric bus industry. See, basically, for any uh, uh, industry, it takes time. EV uh, as such is still at an nascent stage. About uh, almost 1.8 million uh, buses are in operation, and uh, uh, as per the Government of India initiatives and the vehicle scrappage policies, uh, large number of buses are going to get replaced by 2030. So, in view of this, uh, uh, the all the uh, entire industry is actually building the supply chain. So it is going to take some time. So we, uh, as a company, as till now cumulatively, we have delivered about close to 1,700 buses. Okay. 1,700 buses, 1,695 to be precise, till 31st March 2024. And regarding the new plant, you mentioned that the trial production is on, and by the end of the quarter one, you will be in a position to ramp up your production capacity to around 2,500 per annum. Is it correct? Yeah, you are correct. So the first quarter will be a slower one, and in the rest of the three quarters, we hope to sell about 1,800 all buses, so 200 to meet the target of 2,000 crores, which we have set for ourselves. Correct. Yes, you are right. And the, regarding the sale, um, um, uh, you know, if you see our balance sheet, we have cash above 170, 75 crores, and the date of our 120 crores. Now for the the capex for the first plant is already over. Now you are mentioning that the capacity is going to be ramped up to 5,000 by to, uh, next year and uh, to 10,000 by the, uh, the second year, 26, 27. So for that purpose, what will be the incremental capital expenditure will be required? 
the total capex uh, planned is about 700 uh, odd crores out of that final crores is what we are uh, uh, taking a term debt and balance 200 crores is from internal accruals so uh, and to this uh, particular capex plan will take care of the civil side it can cater to 10000 members the planted machinery balancing equipment may be required maybe about 100 uh, odd crores to increase to 10000 so the total is around 700 crores and out of that already we have spent something on the new plant no first plant so we have actually initial first plant was a lead facility we were uh, so this is our own plant first uh, old plant we have spent about 100 odd crores till date the balance will be spent with the internal accruals and some term debt we will be taking yes, there is no, no uh, plan to raise capital equity capital as of now, uh, we are basically uh, uh, not yet decided. So, uh, so as of now, there are no plans as on date. And now this battery norms problem you mentioned that because see, the testing facilities are not available in India, and government has made it mandatory safety norms, etc. So the problem still persists, or uh, that is you have to get it checked uh, from some other country. The certification uh, is over now we received in quarter two but post certification the uh, the uh, vendor has to ramp up their production because the other change in the norms so accordingly the ramp up uh, uh, has taken time so because of that reason because not only us or uh, entire industry uh, uh, are importing battery cells and uh, the power train components so we are dependent on imports for the battery cell and battery uh, the power train components uh, so as of now, no Indian company is ma making. It's in the process of there. Some of the companies have started. So maybe in two or three years' time, uh, uh, the battery cells will be available in India. So the problem is still there. So what, when you ramp up your production, say about and say about 2,000 or 1,500 or etc., the will that um, the vendors will be in a position to cope up that. Yeah, we have had a very detailed deliberations uh, meetings, various meetings with the vendors, and uh, we have uh, uh, definitely uh, uh, confirm confirmation from them they will be in a position to supply. And with respect to this order book, when we have some tenders and we have the delivery schedule of May, uh, actually book for next two years and three years, so when there, if there is a price rise in between, that is the commodity prices go up, the speed prices go up, or whatever battery prices go up, then in that case, uh, are we compensated in the same commensurate way? Uh, see, basically, we are expecting the battery prices to come down. Uh, I think you can uh, uh, go through the studies. Uh, from a $200 uh, dollar per uh, kilowatt, uh, it is likely to come down by 50%, uh, 100% in next two to three years, or it can come up even much before. So uh, we are not expecting any major changes because the major 40-45% is the cost of the battery uh, uh, component. Battery component is the total cost. And other components, uh, if there's a price increase or a price escalation, like a steel or other uh, raw materials, uh, we operate on cost based model and we uh, will be in such a situation, mutually we discuss with the customer to modify the price. So if required, some modification can be done because otherwise when the delivery schedules are delayed, it takes two years and three years. Who can predict the costing environment after such a long time? So that was my question. So will you compensate if there is any big Hello? Uh, last bit, I, I was not clear. I was not able to hear you. Please. No, what I was asking, since the delivery schedules get delayed, and suppose we have to supply it after one year, and if you are required because of the delays, you supply it after two years or three years, the prices will change. And in that case, if the price, as you mentioned, our battery prices come down, etc., it's fair. But if uh, there is a, it is to our disadvantage, and if we keep on losing money on that, will we, uh, will that cost be borne by the uh, customer, or we have to bear it? No, uh, actually, just to clarify, uh, Mr. Samir. See, we operate on a cost-less model. See, on a uh, uh, volume and on a uh, based on the volumes, we expect the operating margins to remain uh, uh, healthy. Uh, we uh, we don't expect major challenges in operating margins. So, uh, so the cost comes down, the sale price comes down, the cost goes up, the sales price goes up. 
So that is how it is. So there's a flexibility to revise the prices, but uh, generally we factor inflation while quoting the prices at the time of bidding. That's fair. Okay, and all the best. Let us hope uh, we have a good financial year coming, uh, coming financially and going forward also. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask questions. We have our next question from the line of Rishabh Agnihotri, a shareholder. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Hi. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about uh, you know, the old quarter. Yes, we are worried about. You are not certainly clear. Uh, can you can hear me? Handset? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Better. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So I'm just saying that I I'm, I'm not going to focus on the past quarters. I'm just focusing on the the upcoming ones. Uh, see, I, one thing I don't understand is like you know, I mean, one of the reasons why we back Electra is because of the promoter Mega, right? And I mean, you guys have built dams and you built tunnels and all. So I just don't understand that you know, I mean, from 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 that perspective and spectrum, putting a factory in capacity expansion should be not that hard, right? So I just don't understand why is it not being prioritized or how? What are the actual restrictions? Because the battery norm thing we have been hearing since the last to last to last quarter. Um, I'm just, I'm, I mean, totally understand that this is a new field and you know it's, it's, it's more innovative in general. But we 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 feel somewhere like you know the, the overall transparency or clarity is not there. Uh, so if you can throw some light on this, that would be very helpful because you know the execution numbers are. I mean, I mean, you know, we can track this data in real time on Wuhan and this data is like quite different. Like you know, one month you're just producing one bus and one month you're producing 95 plus buses. So just don't understand where where where's the problem coming exactly. Just one minute. The Wuhan uh, clarification uh, from my colleague. Yeah, the the Wuhan data is the state to state. Have it uh, from the. Uh, uh, let's say uh, when we dispatch from our plant, maybe we have a uh, multiple customers at multiple locations, right? And at, at Valakra, our part is to only do a TR, and after that, our customers will do the registration and other things. Maybe few buses will be delivered in Hyderabad. Maybe in one or two days. it got registered maybe few buses will go to uh, states like assam where you need to uh, transport the buses itself for more than 15 days or so and few buses will go to uh, maharashtra and various locations of india so uh, state to state the registration procedures are different so it is taking time the wohan data only takes when the bus got registered got it so it might be operating at a delay totally understand that part But just one thing which I want to understand is like why why is the execution overhang there, especially for us, right? I mean, uh, we have been pioneers in this field. We've launched it before. I think your capacity plan and utilizations all are commendable, no doubt about it. It's just that you know all of our investors are like we're just around that finish line, and we can see that this this, this electro might just boom up. But you know these risks, like sort of execution risks, keep coming up. So if you can just sh- share some light because the battery norms, I don't think. That's, that 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 was last quarter to quarter, right? And you know we moved and expanded our factory. I mean, 100 buses is like from from that spectrum where you're saying that we'll go to 400 buses. I think it's it's not that digestible, right? So I mean, if you can share a bit more information, that would be very helpful. So I think uh, we have clarified uh, very clearly post certification mm-hmm. the supply chain constraints uh, in ramping up the production. Uh, based on the new certification norms, uh, so there has been uh, ramping up issues from the vendor side. The second is uh, uh, on the uh, transitioning. We have been transitioning uh, to our new plant. Uh, so uh, and as you uh, as uh, being transitioned to new plant, there were teething issues which we are resolving. By end of this quarter one, we will be uh, streamlining the production in the new plant. And as far as the MEL is concerned, the MEL. is the parent company of course uh, uh, we have full support from nel wherever this required but as a philosophy of the group uh, all the companies have to be self sufficient and independent so wherever we require support from nel we we are, they have been supporting so and we have sufficient uh, we have uh, relevant board as well as shareholder approval to approach nel in case of a need so based on the Uh, deliberations of internal uh, management. We have uh, going to raise a term loan to the extent of 500 crores, and uh, post which we that uh, the plant capacity will be uh, expanded initially to start with to 2,500 to 5,000 in by end of the year one. 
by year 2 we expect the ramp up of the production to 10000 numbers but i mean i just hope that this time the targets are met because yeah, yeah i mean so the targets have been downsizing ever since i mean we've been tracking this for last one one and a half year now right so the targets like get downsized as soon as the quarter reality hits so we just hope that this this time there are no problems and you know uh, things go in the right direction uh, because you know competitors are definitely coming up in the field jbm has been doing really well uh, tata is producing large amount of buses and getting it delivered registered i mean i'm seeing that data on wahan there is like large disparity so i'm just worried as electra's investors and well wishers that we shouldn't stay behind uh, in any i mean that's all that's all i have to say i just hope that uh, you know the next meeting we are just you know we are meeting a better terms that's all thank you yeah thank you uh, very much mr vishab we hope definitely we are striving and uh, from quarter to onwards the production will get ramped up and discharges will definitely will be much better than uh, earlier quarter and this financial year 25 26 will be uh, uh, historically we are surpa- will be surpassing all the numbers thank you so much 24 25 thank you sir we have a next question from the line of sanjay uh, shareholder please go ahead uh, hello good evening uh, am i audible yeah you are audible mr sanjay uh, hi yes hi good evening all uh, and uh, it, it's really a disappointing quarter uh, uh, for investors and well i'm sure for the uh, company as well the last three quarters every time uh, we are getting projections uh, for after q1 call uh, we got projection of 500 buses and q2 we got uh, 1000 plus and uh, q3 we got 800 plus uh, yeah there was a problem already informed about uh, the battery problem battery norms now was the supply chain because probably the vendor is not able to uh, give those batteries and that impacted your delivery of that so these problems definitely if you are already known problem then uh, you wait in the end of the quarter and then inform that okay this is the problem it will be great if you then whenever problems are there why don't you just suspend sale because whatever the projections are given 800 plus uh, at the end of the quarter q3 quarter now if the problem is there you could have been just inform uh, rather than getting shocker at the end of the quarter so that's uh, one thing uh, it looks like a execution and uh, operations issue i mean uh, on that uh, even uh, in between uh, mr pradeep has come on the television channel and it was again confirmed that it was 800 plus buses to be delivered in uh, this particular financial year uh, last financial year uh, so uh, it would be great i mean uh, if we are be more transparent and update uh, everyone about uh, any changes are happening in projections second is about uh, good you guys are doing very good work uh, coming on the call and explaining it uh, but the uh, last three calls we haven't had mr pradeep uh, coming and uh, addressing uh, investors maybe maybe we have saw him on the television uh, with the channel so it will be great if next call the call with uh, pradeep uh, and many senior people come on the call and this is really uh, frustrating i mean uh, for the investor perspective uh, whenever uh, all projections are going for toss on that uh now uh, for the q1 perspective uh, again you are saying the quarter will be subdued uh, because uh, though like you are saying that the problem of the uh, supply chain is solved uh, only the transition of new plant may be happening uh, but still uh, the uh, buses uh, will not be delivered more than uh, q4 probably on that so how how the things are be taken care of and uh, about the uh, new plant is it going to be a uh, fully functional by june 1st or july or august what is there what are the timelines for that it's partial uh, uh, one of the body shops partial uh, partially we are completing it so uh, and uh, the uh, construction is progress is, uh, is progressing uh, uh, and uh, by end of uh, this calendar year we are hopeful of uh, the capacity to be ready uh, and by end of 31st march 25 we expect the capacity to be around 5000 numbers yeah yeah that, that is right so for the transition to the new plant it is not yet started it is a may and now end of april now and almost uh, may and june so it's the next two months you are transitioning to the new plant we already right? started the uh, trial production we have started the dispatching the first batch of numbers from there and uh, we uh, so the ramp up will happen from quarter 2 okay but uh, there is a specific reason uh, that uh, the supply chain problem is solved so it is not going to be uh, you cannot increase the capacity compared to q4 uh, in q1 and it will be still uh, around same number of what you are saying in q4, uh, q1 uh, on that q1 will be subdued and q2 onwards uh, with ramping uh, ramping up okay and uh, the other question is about uh, other than tipers and uh, e buses now anything uh, new uh, you guys are planning to launch in fy25 like uh, hydrogen bus or 
three wheelers or uh, uh, cars any any other plans are there in f i twenty five from uh, uh you know, our company as of now there are no such plans so uh so the hydrogen bus uh, prototype that was just a prototype because there is no further progress on anything on uh, uh, making it a production there as of now we have separate prototype bus and uh, um, so we have already mentioned earlier the trials will take more time and it's a new technique okay uh, all right i think uh, yeah it will be great uh, uh, if we get updates uh, 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 sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So we have the management line disconnected. We will uh, yeah. wait. We will join them back. Hello. We have a next question from the line of Mr. Gorang from Utility Unified. Please go ahead. Uh, uh yeah, I'm audible. Yes, sir. That's yeah. Good. So, uh, okay, this is more of an appreciation that I wanted to convey to the team. Uh, since I stay in Mumbai, uh, the so far delivered 12 meter AC buses have been received extremely good positive reviews. So, uh, congratulations for that. I mean, I've been hearing since. From all quarters of people that they have really appreciated this bus. So God bless you all, and I hope Alwaidi gives us strength to deliver the 5,000 pending buses at the earlier. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the feedback, and definitely we are striving to complete the deliveries as per the uh, plan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Mr. Sahil. Please go ahead. Uh, it's not audible. Hi, uh, this is Sunil. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir, you are audible. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah. So, as per the visual plan, uh, we need to do the automation, right? Almost like 60 to 70 percent of the automation. So, did we finalize the automation vendor? Yes, we are in the uh, process of uh, uh, finalizing uh, all the vendors. They have already uh, shortlisted and uh, uh, closed the discussions. So, uh, so it's a continuously it's a continuous process. So by end of this year, uh, we will have the capacity to build up to 5,000 with automation. Which is so with the automation, without automation, how much the capacity will range? Uh, will it depend or it doesn't make any much difference? Like with automation yeah. and without automation. In a granular manner, the plant is built. So we have two body shops. So first body shop is being uh, is ready now. So where we did the uh, trial production and then commenced uh, supply of uh, first batter buses. Uh, so automation we are doing in the second uh, body shop. Yeah, good. And uh, the second thing is like uh, recently, like uh, I don't remember exactly, the one of the RTC, uh, they raised a warning stating like we missed some deliverables. So based on the timeline which we knew we are supposed to deliver. So how are we going to address that? Because they might even because in the, they might be having the penalty clause on them, right? Yeah. If there are further delays. Yeah. Uh, see, see, what is happening is I think we have clarified this question in the earlier calls. Uh, so the electric bus uh, uh, operations is highly remunerative to the uh, uh, FTU, and uh, in terms of uh, their scope of bus, uh, scope, uh, they are supposed to give us the uh, depot space and okay. also with power. 
So sometimes, uh, uh, as for example, in the state of uh, Mumbai itself, about almost 100 plus uh, depots are required to be established. And in the state of Maharashtra, about 173 depots are required to be established. So their uh, responsibility, the SDU's responsibility is to allocate the space and provide the power to us. And uh, okay, based on I that, got we, uh, yeah, we have to be charging. Yeah, and um, my next question is like, uh, are we planning to run because still the new production capacity is in full until it comes to full uh, production capacity? Uh, why don't we run the old uh, production capacity and the new production so that it will meet the delivery and everything and uh, means uh, with the RTCs and for the investors also? Why can't we run both the things? Is it not viable for us? Uh, see, basically, operationally, it is not convenient. So because uh, uh, otherwise we need to have two general managers operating a uh, old plant and a new plant and uh, and we want to basically focus uh, from one uh, under one roof uh, wherein we want to uh, granularly build uh, the body shop and the chassis assembly and the battery assembly and all the other uh, uh, relevant uh, sheds. So and Volectra, <clears throat> sir, Volectra is known for its quality product in the market. If you operate in a old plant and a new plant, if there are, if for the same customer also, if there is difference in qualities and other things, it will be issue. So we don't want to uh, lose the brand value and quality parameters. That is our uh, the prime SOP. But uh, okay, my next question is like, what is the probability like like no? Because for Q1, uh, you, uh, we are estimating like no, we'll be having a little bit of lesser numbers. So even the same risk can be continued to Q2 also, right? Because if the because we are only planning to operate only from the new plant, so to, during this transition phase it might be because on, if any new factor comes into picture uh, during this transition phase, even the Q2 also might get uh, disturbed because of this, right? See, uh, we are uh, planning to do about uh, uh, that. That is the reason uh, we are building up capacity uh, uh, slowly. About 200 numbers is what we are targeting in quarter one doubling it up in quarter two, and thereafter, uh, the quarter three and quarter four, we are going to increase uh, significantly. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. As there are no further questions, I would like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we thank all the stakeholders uh, for their continuous support. And uh, we are uh, uh, definitely striving to uh, beat our numbers. Historically, we are striving to have uh, excellent top line and bottom line in uh, financial year 24-25, and uh, we continue to have the support from the stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you so much.